get some nice zoom ins. All right, so I'm gonna do one of these. Now, I, I really recommend uh, not focusing so much on exact turnarounds. The Disney's are really well done because they've actually done all these in clay already and they're really clean, but uh, if you know anything about concept, you'll know they do a lot of cheats. Obviously, they don't draw everything in all the views because of their, um, their cartoons. So it looks kind of weird. You still have to solve something each time you approach it in clay. But uh, they're, the Disney ones are usually really well done, and uh, if you just focus on one of them and try to capture the mood, you can usually come up with pretty good results. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll try a couple different ones here. Let's see how fast we can go. This clay is a little cold. I usually keep a chunk like this in my hand, keeping it warm while I go. It helps have it ready to go. So this is a rough sketch. I don't really go crazy on the detail yet. You can work on each individual piece, but as you know from handling it from last week, the more you hold it, the more it'll kind of get distorted as you go anyway. So I just try to rough it in as quickly as possible to get the, the volumes in place. Adding on chunks, I just try to taper it naturally as I pull it, but uh, the smoothing is pretty easy. It'll look really bumpy and gross for a while, but the, uh, the smoothing out is when it really starts to get nice. If you ever worked with uh, terracotta before too, you'll notice this is a lot easier to join to itself. You don't have to worry about scoring it or doing anything crazy. You just smoosh it together like that. As long as you go around the edge nicely, you'll, you'll never have it fall off. But I wouldn't recommend just sticking, sticking something to it on the side like that. It'll, it'll, it'll fall off. You have to sort of mix it together to get it going. And uh, you probably want to start a little smaller than you would want to finish it. It ends up, depends on if you tend to go additive or 
subtracted, but uh, you can end up getting a lot bigger than you intended if you're not careful. So this is not very strong join. You want to smush that together. Even if it messes up what you started with, it still gives you the volume in the right place. You could just carve it out of a solid block, too. It really depends on how you think. But I don't know. It feels kind of weird for me to carve clay. But if you work, uh, this, this kind of tool is really helpful for that, especially if you start off with something sphere and you want to cut into it, like eye sockets or something. Now this one really doesn't have much of a shape. There's barely a hint at a muzzle here. eyes, if you're going to approach eyes by cutting out and building it up, you can do it that way, but this sort of cartoon thing, I don't know, I would just leave it where it is and press around it to make an eye. But a big mistake you can make too is uh, too much detail in one spot before you really get the rest of it roughed in. I tend to go for the eyes too soon. But uh, sketching it in there rough is pretty helpful for getting the volumes right. So I wouldn't uh, wouldn't say it's wrong to rough it in here like this.
And when you have a sheet like this, you kind of have to make a decision at some point which one you're going to do, which I seem to be having a problem with here. Let's go with the squinty. It's just a line there, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to think about how close to anatomically correct you're going to go. Do you want to have the whole socket the shape there? Or what are you going to do? So something to think about. A little hints at it usually is enough. Hair, obviously, you can't really do hair exactly like hair. Just get little bits. Whoops, see, I was holding it, wasn't looking, smushed a face. Gotta watch what you're doing there. And a lot of times, too, the head, you know, you may end up uh, getting it in the wrong spot. You can just cut it off and change it, too. So at this point, I'm not really concerned with where the neck joins. I'm just sort of holding it by its body. And I'm going to clean this up just a little bit more before I go back to the body. Because uh, I'm impatient. I don't know. I get distracted easily. I want to focus on one thing. But I have fun with it, so I just do what's interesting and move on. There really isn't too much to go on with the forehead here. Just sort of just guessing.
armed. Oh. <laughs> I don't know Sorry. if you can put this on YouTube anymore. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the chin and the neck in the right place here. Well, now it's worse. Yeah, as you can see, you, you the more you handle it here, the more it'll uh, it'll start to get squishy. So I'm gonna try to get the rest of this right first. Looks like I had just a little bit too much under there. to go on for these paws, so I'm not going to go crazy on the details. In fact, it's tempting to want to make a cute little paw, but if I was doing this in a production environment and I want to stay on model, obviously I can't just go make changes like that. much better.
again here there isn't much anatomy going on but you can still hint at things that you know are supposed to be there this up a little bit later but I'm gonna wrap this one up just to get you guys the idea a couple different things but uh, hopefully you got something out of that I, I just I strongly recommend you do something a little more in character instead of just doing a, a straight t-pose you would never do a maquette or a, a model like this in a t-pose unless you planned on scanning it in which is not the case today Smooth it out. You can't really do whiskers on something like this. <laughs> Let's stick a, maybe little pieces of fishing line in if you really wanted to make it look like that at the end, but. I wouldn't bother to do anything like this, It'd just be silly. Okay, so that's that. dad before. That's quite fun. I know that Hercules ones, they're really strange designs. They, uh, they look quite different from each angle. You don't really need too much clay if you're going to do a bust. You can just start off with your little uh, upside down T shape. Press it down on the table for some balance. Try to put the neck a little forward. And then get into your actual character. So this guy doesn't have much of a <coughs> shoulders, actually. And you could, uh, you know, close one eye and hold it up there if you really want to go for like exact measurements and stuff. But it depends on 
what you want to exercise. It's always good to just try to judge proportions with your eye, but I'm not against measuring. The shoulders will give you something to hold on to also, so you don't smush the face too much. So at this point, it starts to get really flexible. And whether to add or subtract, it really depends on what size you have and how much you finished. If you finish the eyes, obviously you got to kind of scale everything else to fit that. So try to keep it all at the same level while you're going. adding the eyebrow here, I'm actually just adding the brow ridge so there's enough to stick out there. I'll try to slow down a little bit here.
just going to check my side measurement one more time. So even though there's no hint of lips here except for a tiny little tiny little diagonal line on the side, I'm still going to hint a little bit of a lip there. But it's hard to resist hard to resist the urge to make it more realistic. His beard isn't really substantial, you could just scratch it in there, but why not just make a little line? And don't bother with the ears at this point, you'll just squish them. He has a much longer chin. So 
So when you get to this point, you realize you've measured too short. Don't be attached. Move something. So it's really the lips that are too low. So I, when I say I'm not measuring, I am measuring with my eye. You just have to keep doing it over and over again. But I'm not grabbing the calipers and taking numbers down. So I'm looking at the distance between here and here, here and here, this size versus that distance. Just keep looking over and over again. So even though this seems kind of simple, I would consider this a little more on the higher on the difficulty scale. Going with uh, you know, all the features of the face. But you might as well jump right in and give it a try. Let's rough in some line. So here I can see I don't have I don't have enough clay in place here. I'm still gonna rough it in to get an idea of the size. That's not just the eyeball, this is like the puffiness under the eye and the eyeball and the, the eyelids. <coughs> you can see how useful this shape tool is for this.
So there's no lines there on the drawing, but it's obviously not flat. So if we turn it mind. So it looks right. It's still quite flexible. I mean, you can, you can cheat length a little bit if you want. You gotta be careful, obviously, squeezing it. Just uh, finish up this side, and then you guys can get started. Hopefully, this gives you a pretty good idea of ways to tackle this sort of thing. So obviously you've got to put more time in if you want to finish this up, but um, this is at least a few hours if you want to get it all cleaned up and finished. That feels pretty good. Okay, so I have plenty of clay for everybody and lots of tools to share. Um, I'll be around, so uh, if you have any questions.